Welcome to Wild Ideas Worth Living, a show where we talk to experts who've taken a wild idea and made it a reality so you can too. From people who have sailed around the world to those who've started thriving businesses and even broken records, some of the wildest ideas can lead to the most rewarding adventures. I'm your host, Shelby Stanger, and I hope you enjoy this show. This is episode 27 with Surf Diva Surf School founder, Izzy Tihani. This episode was brought to you by Toad & Co., this awesome outdoor company out of Central California, which, by the way, was named one of the best places to work by Outside Magazine, makes 90% of their clothing using eco-friendly materials, whether it's organic, plant-based, or recycled fabrics. Their products are also designed to go from the trail to the tavern, which is a huge bonus because who likes changing in multiple outfits when you're having a good time? One of my favorite programs they have is called Design for Good, where they take a portion of every single item they sell and put it towards exposing people with disabilities to life-changing trips in the outdoors. Their mission also aligns perfectly with having a wild idea worth living. Toad & Co. is all about inspiring people to live life to their fullest. They're rabid supporters of following your passions and refusing to settle. They also promote real people doing good work. Check out all the amazing products, missions, and ambassadors of all abilities they support at toadandco.com. Izzy Tihani started the first surf school for women only in 1996. Prior to founding Surf Diva, Izzy was a competitive collegiate surfer. She competed on the professional women's longboard circuit, hosted an awesome TV show for action sport, and at one point she was even my surf camp counselor. Surf Diva has won hundreds of awards. The brand is also has a storefront shop in La Jolla, which was named the best woman's surf shop of the year by the Surf Industry Manufacturers Association. Izzy has an awesome story, which is why she frequently gets asked to speak at women in business and women in sports events. She also happens to be one of my best friends ever, so we get a little cheeky on the show, but we talk about some great stuff, the keys to business, success, being outnumbered in the surf, her family, coming from an immigrant family of immigrant parents. We talk about body image, confidence, advice to those starting out. And I'm pretty sure she even tells some of the fun pranks she plays on me, like the time she told everyone in the water when we were surfing that her best friend paddling out just got out of jail. And if I steal their waves, it means I want to date them. She does that all the time. And if we don't tell that well, now I'm telling you right now. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the show. This is a good one. Enjoy it. Welcome to the show, Isabel Izzy Tihani. We're so excited to have you on. Thank you, Shelby. Great to see you. You. Aloha. Aha. So let's just get right started. This wild idea to start an all-woman surf school. You've told me a little bit about it, but but how did it start? This was 1996 when you started. There wasn't... I know there's a lot of all-women surf schools now, but there was none and you started it. So where did this wild idea come from? Definitely was a wild idea when I started it. I was working for a company called STV, and we were making TV shows for surf, skate, snowboarding. When I told the guys at work what I was doing, they told me I was crazy. Chicks don't surf, and you're not going to have any students. And I said, you know what? I don't care. I want to teach the girls how to get out there and surf and be confident. And I just started with one student who brought four friends and she told their friends and they told their friends. And when women do like something, the word of mouth will spread like wildfire. That's so true. So where, where did like this idea though, to actually just teach women to come from? Was it just one day you were like, cause you had been teaching surfing for a while before, but why did you just want to teach only women? I had taught surfing in college when I was on the UCSD surf team. I was a collegiate surfer, and I got to travel around uh, for the university and surf for them. And we were the national champions. And, That's awesome. And I was very successful at that. It was a, pretty much an incredible dream to surf for UCSD. And then when I graduated, I went to work for that show and realized that there's nothing for women who want to learn to surf who are not 16 years old in a surf camp for kids, nothing for adults. And so 
I realized that because I went to a surf shop and talked to the owner and she said, yeah, these women love these boards, but they don't know how to surf and there's no one out there. Wait, so was it, it was an them. all woman surf shop? Yeah. The first all women surf shop called Water Girl in Encinitas. I spoke to the owner, Elona, and said, wow, these boards are beautiful. I'm sure you're selling them like crazy. And she said, no, I'm not. I'm not selling any boards. All these women come in and they said, I really wish I could surf, but I don't have anyone to teach me how. And I went, wow, I can help you. I can help teach some women how. And so I just thought, I'm going to do a women's weekend clinic and we'll just do it on a weekend and see how it goes. And I made a little flyer with my home phone number on it and put it up in her <laughs> so shop sketchy. and said, women's surf clinic, I'll provide the boards, you bring a wetsuit. And... Uh, Krista Thomas called out of the blue and said, I want to learn. And I said, okay, come on down. And she brought four friends and I did the clinic and just word spread like wildfire. And then the next weekend, those four friends bought their friend, brought their friends who brought their friends and it just went exponentially nuts. And so uh, it was just within a year we were in the Wall Street Journal. That's crazy. I mean, I remember you were my camp counselor, so it was just novel to have a female surf instructor. There was all these cute, gorgeous men teaching me to surf, which I didn't mind. But then when there was a female, you, it was so cool because I related to you and my mom thought you were cool. So finally I could have a babysitter who, you know, also taught me to surf, which was very cool and lucky. And who could put up with you. And who could put up with you. That's very true. You know, in the early days, there this is totally different time now, and I know it's probably hard for some people listening to believe, but people weren't that stoked on girls surfing or teaching surf lessons. Did you get some, some heat early on? Early on, I will say there were some dark days where I almost questioned, why am I doing this? Guys are yelling at me. We would get sprayed in the water where they would come up on their board and, and <laughs> I still try get sprayed. And remember, you still get sprayed. You still get guys thrown spray in your face as hard oh, as yeah. they can. As hard as they can. And they would say stuff and spray spray us and just say, you know, chicks don't surf. And and uh, one of my instructors was told, you know, the the kitchen's over there, honey. <laughs> And, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Um, that was Berlin, and guys are like, you know, what are you doing out here? And calling us all kinds of names that just really made me realize, you know, they're just afraid. They're afraid that we're taking over the surf. And, you know, but the thing is, we don't give up. We're not going to back down. We deserve to be in the ocean just as much as they do. And we came up with the saying that the ocean welcomes everyone and belongs to no one. So, you know, we feel like there's a lot of localism. There's a lot of fear in surfing where guys really don't want anyone else on their wave. And surfing's kind of a selfish sport at times when people don't want to share. Yeah. I come from a different kind of feeling. I have way more fun when I surf with my friends. I enjoy being out there with other people. And for me, it's a social thing. It's a lifestyle. It's not just about how many waves can I bag. It's like I get just as stoked watching someone else catch the best wave of their life as myself. I've caught a million waves. I'm so lucky and blessed. And I just want to share that. I think what's so interesting is now I feel like it's come full circle. I mean, guys paddle up to us all the time now and they say, oh, we love having other girls in the lineup. And it's just a different time. It's really cool. And women today surf better than ever it's it's got to be fun to watch for you as well well wow, it's awesome to see the girls shredding and the girl posses and we have a little posse that we sponsor the pineapple posse and it's middle school girls that are really going to take it to a whole nother level with surfing and the thing is is we had to pave the way and and you know fight the fight and some of those girls with that i surfed with competitively they're still friends with me today so that's really cool that's really cool what, what do you think makes a good surfer a good surfer has to be patient number one you got to learn to go with the flow and roll with the punches and not panic because if you panic uh you know you're lost you you lose your breath so surfers the lessons we learn in the water translate to on land if you're driving and someone cuts you off and you panic, it's not a good thing. So you got to keep your head cool and look all around you. you starting a business is, is not easy. You know, you said you started it really organically, but now you're probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest surf school in the nation and probably the most recognized surf team has been written up everywhere. There's times though that like 
running an organization with 80 instructors and tons of kids in the water has to be a little hectic or if someone gets stung by a stingray and I don't know, something random happens, you know, you don't have people complaining like you would in, if you were teaching like Excel spreadsheet classes. I mean, most people are having fun, so you don't have too many complainers, but, but I guess what have been some of the keys to handle stressful situations? I know whenever I see you and there's like hectic stuff, you're, you're laughing. <laughs> How do you cultivate laughter in times of pure chaos? Well, first of all, I, I get to work with my twin sister, Coco, and we're complete opposites, yet we work really well together, and we really like the people we work with. We've got the best coaches on the planet who love what they do, and we make it more about the journey than the actual end result. So you have to enjoy the learning process. Some of the best waves I've ever gotten in my life that I remember vividly were when I was learning. So we want to tap into that and tell our coaches that's what's most important is are they having fun while they're learning? It, surfing's not a pass or fail. People think, oh, I'm not going to be any good at it. Well, are you having fun? Are you enjoying being out in the water? Pat yourself on the back. You went to the ocean today. You got wet. Like whether you caught a wave or 10 waves, or got up on your knees, or your feet, or your belly, you're surfing, you're catching a wave, you're communing with nature on a whole different level. And as a business owner, it does put you in a tough spot, because we are at the mercy of nature, and what the ocean gives us that day. So we have to make our expectations realistic with what surfing is going to give us that day. And so I always tell the people, you know, I do what the ocean tells me to do, whether it's surfing, or paddle boarding, distance paddleboarding, sup surfing, whatever we're going to do, it's what the ocean gives us. What do you like best about surfing? Like what does mm. surfing do for you? Surfing just makes me feel good. It's like my yoga, it's my swimming, it's my everything all combined into one. It's my therapy, it's my meditation, it's my goal in life. I just want to surf more and more. And it's social. Yeah. And you get to talk it, smack out there a little exactly. bit. <laughs> I get to make fun of my friends and and it's just a party in the water. It, surfing's just the funnest thing. Do you have any stories of like, some great moments of people you've taught to surf that you can share? We're so lucky in that we're in California. We teach some crazy people. Uh, we've had a lot of celebrities come through. We've had some amazing people come. We had Will Ferrell recently came and surprised us because, you know, they don't tell you in advance that they're coming. They just walk in under a different name and you're like, oh, hi. <laughs> and uh, he comes into our surf shop. We've got a really cute surf shop in La Jolla Shores and we call it a surf boutique because it's mostly for women. Although we do have our token men's section in the back, kind of making fun of the old the old yeah. days when it was just the girls would have three bikinis in the back and that was all we had offered to us and now we have a whole beautiful array of beautiful surf lines from Roxy and bikini lines to uh, great great outfits we love it. and skateboards but Will Ferrell comes in and he grabs the blue Zinka and smears it all over his face and gets a wetsuit on and he walks down the beach and no one could even tell it was him he was kind of in a disguise out in plain but the lifeguards figured it out I don't know how but they got on the the, the lifeguard tower got on the horn and said, hey, San Diego, we want to warn you to uh, stay classy. <laughs> and it was the best thing. They knew it was him and, and were making comments about sharks and some fun stuff he did as Anchorman. So, oh, that's yeah, so he did funny. great. He brings his family down and the kids are great and his wife is awesome. And we just love meeting fun people like that. Another really amazing time was when Oprah put us in her magazine. She sent down this huge, the biggest RV I've ever seen in my life. Hair, makeup, we're talking like the fan in your face, kind of with the hair blowing, the whole nine yards, like a crew of 20 people just to take our picture. Awesome. And my sister and I were looking at each other just going, is this really happening? Is this for real? Because we were chosen as entrepreneurs that Oprah loves. So that was a huge major moment for us. That's awesome. You know, you don't just teach women, you teach men to surf as well. <laughs> Is there a difference between teaching men as there is teaching women? Are there some tactics? I mean, I know I have different tactics when I teach guys. Versus oh, yeah. Girls. Guys want to get out there and learn by doing it. Women want to learn everything ahead of time, aren't afraid to ask questions. We want to stop and ask for directions. Women don't want to get in the way. And women are worried about being embarrassed. Guys don't care for the most part. I mean, I, I am yeah. using 
you know, some broad generalizations, but uh, women get so worried about body image. And I wish that that wasn't a problem. And that's something we're fighting every day and saying, you don't have to be a size two to surf. We've had girls call us on the phone and say, I'm really, really big. I don't know if I can do this. And we ask her for, you know, how, well, how big are you? Because we need to put you on a board and get you a wetsuit. Oh, well, I'm a size 12. <laughs> I'm like, really? And then she comes in and she's more like a eight or 10. And we're like, come on, girl, you're fine. You can do this. And then we've had other women who are amazing that are 300 pounds and say, I want to do this. And they end up having more fun than the woman that's 150 pounds because they're just let it all go and say, I'm going to do this for me. And that's why I'm really inspired by Oprah in general to go back to her because she never let her body image stop her. And she always fought it, yes, but she was so honest about it and truthful and said, it's not going to keep me from doing my TV show. She's still going to go on the air and do that. And there's days where I'm like, wow, maybe I, I don't really feel good about being in a bathing suit on the beach. But you know what? I think back to her and think that didn't stop her from doing what she wanted to do. So I've always gone and thought about that as like a motivation factor. Yeah, actually, you said to me in times like Oprah didn't wait until she was 10 pounds skinnier to go be Oprah. Right. I thought that was really powerful. And you know, you're not you're not a size two, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, nope. You're you're really strong. You've been on the cover of a plus size magazine, which is so badass. And it's in cool. a bathing suit, in a bathing suit, which is really cool. And I, I think it's really cool because you're a, you know, the vision of a surfer girl right now in magazines is still this skinny little chick in a bikini. And, and I don't know, can you talk a little bit about body image and sort of how you've handled body image and, and how you present yourself and how, how surfing has sort of helped maybe help you have a better body image about yourself? Well, surfing's definitely a body conscious uh, event or yeah. world. Uh, you know, you're, people are in their bikinis and the girls now are super fit and they look great. But one thing that's awesome is we're seeing more and more women who aren't 30, they aren't 40, they're now 50 and 60 going, I've always wanted to do this. And they're signing up for our Costa Rica retreats. And we're getting more and more of the silver surfers. And so women cool. like we had a retired judge recently come and learn and, and women of all ages, uh, you know, as well as our little five and six year olds, but they're coming at it with a different perspective. Like, of course I can surf. There's pink surfboards and pink wetsuits. And, yeah. you know, whereas my silver surfers are coming in at a completely different time in their life. And it's funny how fashion makes it easier uh, now that there's surf leggings and beautiful rash guards and you can look amazing out there in your surf pants and not worry about anything falling out or hanging out or not looking right. So A, fashion is on our side, but B, it's like you have every right to be out there. And there's other cultures in the world where women just go for it and flaunt it like in Brazil or France where, you know, it doesn't matter. You can still enjoy your life even if you're not you know, 10 pounds less or whatever. And so that's something I wish women would do here more is be more confident about yourself and don't worry about the details. Just be healthy and eat right and live right and just enjoy your body. We're so lucky to be healthy. Yeah, you were just telling me about a friend who was really fit and he had he had bone cancer mm -hmm. and um, he's a big wave surfer and very inspirational friend of mine, Scott Chandler, and he's going through a rough time right now with bone cancer. And he's he's a big wave rider. I, I guess I could compare him to Laird Hamilton, and, and I see him as that in my mind in terms of his achievements and what he's done locally and globally, and he's a shaper. And to see someone like that of such a strength and an amazing body, it and real, makes you realize you've got to live life right now for the moment every day. If you've been thinking about maybe learning to surf – don't wait. Don't wait to lose 10 pounds. Don't wait to get 10 years older. And it doesn't matter how old you are or what your physical ability is. Anyone can learn to surf. So I have this question. I've had a lot of different jobs in my life, mostly in journalism and marketing. But but when I teach surfing, I feel like I have the biggest impact on people. Like women come in and they completely change their lives. So when I've, I've personally taught for the audience listening, I've taught at Izzy's camps in Costa Rica. And they're really fun. And we'll teach women. And La Jolla. And La Jolla. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and Fiji. Canada. And Fiji. And Canada. And Mexico. Yep. I'm a lucky kid. But women will come in and they'll either 
like just quit their job or they're going through a transition or they're in a tough relationship. They learn to surf and they're different. And I know after learning to surf, I was different. What is it about surfing? I haven't been able to articulate it well, but what is it about surfing that just changes you? Surfing makes you young again. It makes you a kid. You're actually having fun with nature and you're riding that wave. And uh, if you remember being a kid on a boogie board, how much fun was that? We could have surfed for hours as our kid, even without wetsuits, freezing cold water. Children don't feel the cold. They just go out and have fun until they're blue. And it's just like a return to your youth and you're weightless in the water. So it takes gravity off. And when you're surfing, you can't think of any of your problems. You have to focus on the wave at hand. So you go into the zone. You're not worried about your bank account. You're not worried about your car. You're not worried about anything, just making that wave. That's and so That's so true. I was just thinking about this one girl I taught in Costa Rica. She was a total badass. I think she worked for like, she was like a narcotics undercover officer and she was bigger girl, told tough, did CrossFit. She could kick my butt. She could easily do a push up or a pop up and stand up on a board, but she was having a hard time. And I could see herself kind of beating herself in her head. And I, I just remember like, she's not going to get up because she's beating herself up. Overthinking As it. soon as she just lets go. So I think I said, just think of a big, and I said like a male body part. And all of a sudden, Can I say wave, it? yes, I, <laughs> you said penis. <laughs> I said, think of a big wiener. And all of a sudden I hear this, like she stands up a wave, a wave comes, she stands up and I hear this enus, enus, and it's getting louder and she is shouting penis to the shore. And all it was, was, I don't know if there's nothing a good wave can't cure, a good penis can't cure, but this is probably inappropriate and going a little Which is awesome. off the, um, that's why sorry I'm here to my sponsors <laughs> if they're offended, but really it's, it's just so interesting that, you know, surfing makes you get out of your head. I think that's the biggest thing for me as a kid. I was so type a, which is hard to believe, but I was really type a and anal and surfing just got me to sort of let go. And go with the flow. And you have to let go and go with the flow. And that's the number one thing that surfing teaches us. And as surf instructors, we are so lucky to be able to share what our passion is. And in life, if you can share your love and your passion, and what better thing is there? That's, there's nothing better. I want to go back to the business of running a surf school and a business and a boutique. And you guys have a lot of camps. You don't just have, you have La Jolla Shores, you run teen camps, you run co-ed camps, you do corporate clinics, you do private coaching. There's a lot that goes on at Surf Diva. To have 80 employees and manage them is a lot of work. But you guys, you and your sister Coco are really different and, but complement each other so well. So I want to ask you about being a twin, but first you come from immigrant parents. Did that kind of shape this desire to hustle? And I mean, you, you had to hustle a little bit to be where you are today. You, you know, you do teach surfing, so your job is at the beach, but I see you working until late hours. So how well, does that? First of all, we, we do love what we do. And Coco is the diva. I'm the surf and she runs all the fashion and the merchandising and the apparel line. And Pretty soon we're going to be launching a, an Amazon store with our apparel, and Coco's working on that. But I think the hustle does come from immigrant parents who arrived here with overcoats with silverware sewn into the lining and wow. following a dream. They had no money. Where were they from? And mom's from France and dad's from Hungary. And we still speak French at home, and we, we preserve that with our kids. And the the immigrant families that come here are told this is the American dream. It doesn't get any better than this. And if you can't make it here, you're not going to make it anywhere. And we're also told that there's nothing holding us back mm. because people here respect you for your achievements and your hard work. It, it's not so much what's your social class, what's your religion. It's about what do you bring to the table personally. And we've always taken that in mind. You know, our father is a child survivor of the Holocaust. And our grandmother also, she was a spy against the Nazis and wow. rescued hundreds of Hungarians by smuggling Swedish passports that were false, of course, to Hungarian Jews to get them out of Budapest during the war. And her thing has always been question authority. Don't believe what you're told. Always wonder, is there another way? So we, we are given that little streak of rebellion 
uh, for the status quo, because that was how they survived was by not just following the herd and our family that did follow orders, they're gone. Mm. So we've been always in terms of, you know, you can think outside the box, but not only you can, you have to, it's a matter of survival. And so really going outside of the box has been applauded in our family. It's okay to be different. It's okay to be a girl who surfs. And of course, why shouldn't you? You're an athlete, you're a diva, you can do anything you want. And that's something that we got from our family. Wow, that's amazing. And you said and one of your grandmas used to swim in the Mediterranean, right? Yes, I'm named after her. Her name's oh, Isabel cool. Vital Tihangi. And uh, she's a she was a writer. She wrote an amazing book about what uh, lots of books, poetry, children's stories, and her autobiography was published in France and it made the top 10 bestseller list. And she was on French TV and she's just amazing. And I, I feel like I'm, I want to follow in her footsteps and make her proud. Um, and part of that thing that, okay, they survived so that we could thrive. So we have to live it to the fullest and really enjoy everything that we were given. And part of her example was she retired with her husband in Corsica and she would go swim a mile every day out to the blue patch in the, the clear blue Mediterranean waters in the south of Corsica near Sartan. And she would leave her bathing suit on the shore because oh, that's awesome. she just did not like it. It was uncomfortable. Yeah, uh, so it is uncomfortable. Complete nudists. And Love we it. definitely take after that feeling of freedom. And you know what? I don't give a whatever about what people think because I'm going to live the life that I've been given. And we're just so blessed to be here. That's so cool. I mean, I'm a big proponent of surfing naked, swimming naked. Yes. So many people tell me that they, I just had this girl come up to me at a coffee shop and she was like, Shelby, I had the most incredible experience. I surfed naked in Indonesia with 20 guys. And I was like, just laughing at her. And she's like, no, 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 it wasn't like that at all. It was the most freeing, liberating experience. And I'm still like rolling my eyes being like, you 20 guys are watching you. She's like, no, it wasn't like that. They're all married. And I'm like, oh God. But anyway, she was, she just kept going back to Shelby. Look at this feeling of being naked was just incredible. And I was like, it is incredible. More people should surf naked. It's back to um, being a child. Surfing naked actually makes you feel like when you were a baby running around and didn't care what anyone thought of you. And it's so liberating and freeing. Let's start a surf naked camp. <laughs> <laughs> this might get weird. One thing I think is so interesting is surfing has always been a, a masculine type of sport. And in my mind, I know maybe in ancient Hawaiian times, you saw pictures of women riding waves. and but But I guess it's interesting because a lot of the sports, you know, we choose to do are high risk and considered really masculine but you guys have brought this really feminine kind of embracing your feminine powerful side to the sport I know this isn't really a question but I guess I'm trying to ask you like how how is being feminine like important to you and and how has that helped serve diva as a whole that's a great question and it comes from the name um we were raised to appreciate being women and to celebrate that. And I honestly think girls do have more fun and we have fun when we're all together and surfing can be a very feminine sport. It's dancing on the waves. I love watching female longboarders, the lady sliders. It's just such a beautiful dance and it's so graceful. It's not about dominating the wave. It's about going with the wave and enjoying being on that. And we do feel like surfing can be feminine and it can be, you know, the, the ocean, we say our mother ocean, our mother earth. So it's getting back in touch with who we are as women. And even when I paddleboard, I love paddleboarding at La Jolla Cove. I like to think about the Native Americans that used to canoe through there and the Indian warrior princesses that paddled through La Jolla Cove and the drum beats that they must have heard. And I feel like I get in touch with my inner Indian princess. It's really cool. And <laughs> you get cool. into the zone and, uh, you know, you're paddling out there thinking, I'm looking at the same cliffs that these women must have looked at 2000 years ago and just honoring that and respecting them. Are there any funny or just memorable moments you've had surfing? I mean, I know there's a million, but any that you could share? Oh my gosh, there's so many. There's a time I paddled out at Pipeline when I had no business being out there. And I thought, oh, you know, I was on the North Shore with some friends and I was at uh, with my shortboard at the time. And I thought, oh, I'm going to try and catch a wave out here. And only they're calling it three to four foot, you know, it's not that bad. 
And I paddled out and kind of stayed on the shoulder and watched a little bit and then saw a nice looking head high wave. I thought, oh, I'm going to go for this one, went for it and didn't catch it because there's guys all over. And it's such a yeah. intimidating experience to be out there. Then, of course, the sets come. And it was not oh, a three to four no. foot set. It must have been a 30 foot, like looking down, having the set drill you to the bottom of the ocean and I just looked over to my left right as I was about to try to duck dive this beast of a wave. And there was another girl next to me in the same position. And just knowing that she was there next to me made me realize, okay, we're going to make it. And had I been by myself, I might have freaked out. So knowing that there's someone there with you, another girl going through the same beating made me think, okay, we're going to make it. We're going to be okay. Of course, we both got washed up on the sand and spluttered. But just that's a whole important factor to me is when you're out there learning with other women, you know, the guys always can make it on their own. But when we're a group together, we're stronger. That's so interesting. I just interviewed this woman, Caroline Paul. She's a famous author now, but she's a twin. And I was just thinking like you always have this co-partner in crime to Mm -hmm. know you're 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 in this together i feel like it's the secret advantage it is it's our it's our mantra what we do together we do better and we both have our strengths and our weaknesses and when i show up at the airport to fly to mexico and i forgot my passport coco shows up with it magically she just has this crazy yeah it's just amazing i'm so lucky what's what's kind of next for surf diva Next for Surf Diva, there's a lot of things happening. We're going to re-release our book, The Surf Diva Girl's Guide to Getting Good Waves. And it's our 10-year anniversary from having written the book. And things have changed so much in surfing. I can't wait to uh, re-release it. Our edition sold, uh, they had to go reprint it three times. And they sold a lot of copies. Over 30,000 copies were sold. So we're going to reprint that and republish it and also release it online as well as an online cool. option. And we're adding a whole chapter on paddleboarding, on women's competitive surfing today, and on yoga. Awesome. If you could go back in time and tell your 15-year-old self a piece of advice, what would you tell her? And maybe you could tell us a little bit about, about what your 15-year-old self was like. Mm, that's a great question. Um, 15 year old self was just basically about surfing and swimming. And I just wanted to be in the ocean all day long. I would, our mom would pick us up after school and take us to La Jolla Shores with a big French salad niçoise for our after school snack. Aww. And then we would do homework on the beach and surf for two, three hours. Cause we'd get out of school at two ten. And then after being in the ocean for about three hours, she would take us up to the YMCA for our swim team practice for another two hours. So sometimes I'd be in the water more than on land some days. And my 15 year old self was just super stoked to do that. And I would tell her, just keep doing what you're doing and don't question anything. Just go follow your passion because good things are coming. What would you tell 15 year olds today? I mean, 15 year olds today have social media and just different pressures, I feel like, than we had? That's a good question. I have a nine-year-old daughter, and every day I tell her how much I love her. And that's that's all we can do is try and give them a sense of being nice to their friends, really putting that little kernel of acceptance to other people and realizing how people react to them. When you put good out in the world, it comes back to you. Mm. And that's what I'm trying to teach her is just by really being a good person and seeing that it will come back. Cause you know, when you're nine, you have little things that go on with your friends and just keeping it really where you, you give the person the, the question of the doubt. If someone wants that parking spot, just give it to them. And I have to lead by example. So I have to show her that I'm trying to do the right thing. It's so funny because your, your nine-year-old's getting raised around a surf school with all sorts of cute young surf instructors and she has no clue how good it is she's going to costa rica and oh yeah she's been to fiji twice she's been to costa rica she's been to france uh, mexico and she doesn't get how this upbringing that she's getting is really cool and i try and tell her that but we also try and show her another side as well like this, yeah. you, you are blessed and you are lucky but we we don't want them to take it for granted well, what's great is she's such a good kid. And I'm wondering, like, when is this little rebel going to come out? Let's not talk about her. that. <laughs> she's such a good kid. Mm-hmm. Can you give advice to moms? You have a huge business and you're a mom. What's mm-hmm. been like the best piece of 
advice that you've followed that makes being a parent and a businesswoman, you know, easier? There's a lot of advice out there, but um, a lot of it's instinctual. You just know what you do. Your body knows what to do. And so therefore your, your heart knows. Like when you see, I think my daughter gave me the best advice. And she told me when she was five or six years old, she's like, mommy, sometimes the tears just need to come out and it's, it's okay to cry sometimes. And even in the ocean, I've cried sometimes when I'm having a a bad day and can't catch a wave for the life of me. And I'm like, I'm supposed to be the surf instructor and, and I'm not surfing well. Well, you know what? It's okay to cry in the water. The salty tears just go into the ocean. And we've all had those times where you just need a hug and it's okay to let it out emotionally. And so many people bottle up their emotions And that's what the ocean does for us. It allows us to pull those emotions out and, you know, words of advice from a child, let it all out. That's awesome. How do you, is there, but you are busy. Do you have any routines you stick to every day, like yoga or meditation or ways you eat? Do you try to get up early or do you do most of your work at night? Well, I'm definitely a night owl, not the early bird, but coffee definitely helps. And I think, (laughs) you know, really what's changed for me in the past five years is trying to, eat right and make time to cook. I love cooking soups and really yummy things that I'm getting more and more into is taking the time to learn to be a good cook, to feed your family. I think that's super important. And following other moms, I follow Lisa Druxman, who founded Stroller Strides. And she's a mom with a lot of wisdom. So moms that are ahead of me on that curve give me um, some inspiration. So not being afraid to look towards other people for advice. That's really, that's, that's good advice. I like Lisa. She's another San Diego woman. Where is without, I guess, well, tell me a little bit about some of your favorite surf destinations that you can talk about. Well, going to Costa Rica on Thursday, and I love Costa Rica because it's, uh, it's got that Pura Vida laid back lifestyle. Pura Vida means pure life, simple life. And Costa Rica, it doesn't matter what kind of car you drive because people Mm-mm. don't have cars. So you just walk to the beach in your flip-flops and your mismatched flip-flops doesn't even matter if your flip-flops match. And that's the best part about it. It's just enjoying the sunset. Everyone comes out for sunset and hangs out and everyone's on an even playing field. It doesn't matter who you are, how much money you have. It's just a enjoying life in a simpler way. And that's what I really appreciate about Costa Rica as a destination. Another destination I love is Baja. Uh, Mexico has this... A different vibe. It's not Pura Vida, but it's more amable. Uh, The people there are so nice and welcoming. And if you take time to talk to a local, they just open up to you. And it's just a really beautiful, slower way of life. It's it's just so hectic here and, and we need to slow down. I agree. That's good advice, slowing down. Do you read a little bit or a lot? Oh, I read a lot. I love reading. What are some of your favorite books? I just picked up the book, a book called You're a Badass, which is really fun. Um, Mick Ebling's book is amazing. Um, He's a really cool maker. And uh, I love The Happiness Project. That was a great book. Books that are empowering that make me feel good. I'm also, I just finished reading Jeremy DiConcini's book called Alpine Slide. It's the second in a series. So you got to read both of them. He's one of our instructors who chooses to teach for the right reasons. He's an attorney. He doesn't need the money. He teaches because of what it gives him. So when you put someone on a wave, you're not just giving someone a wave. You're getting that wave back yourself. And I have the best coaches because we personally choose each coach for what they want to offer and what they can bring and how it fulfills them to be a surf instructor. And so I definitely suggest picking up Jeremy's books because they're just fun. They're going to be a movie soon. I could just tell you that. I've actually read his book too. It's awesome. Izzy, you know, you've taught some really interesting people of all different abilities how to surf. Can you tell me a little bit about the clinic you do every year for veterans? And can you also tell me about the girl you taught recently who I think was blind and deaf? Yes. um, Adaptive surfing is relatively new It's something we've been doing for quite a while um, in terms of our company at Surf Diva. But we, the past five years, we've been, this is our sixth year, we've been working with the San Diego Veterans Hospital and teaching disabled surfing. And 
What that means is we take people who you would never think could surf and we have them surfing. And, and it's, it's so amazing to me to be able to teach someone who's in a wheelchair or who's an amputee, who, who's visually impaired, how to surf. And when now when I, it's changed me fundamentally as a human, because now when I'm at the airport and I see someone in a chair, I think to myself, I want to teach that person how to surf. It's like a new challenge for me. And I feel like with the ISA, the International Surfing Association, holding the World Adaptive Surfing Championships at La Jolla Shores in my backyard, when I see those heats going on with all different levels of involvement, it's just fantastic because it tells other people, quote unquote, able-bodied, what are you waiting for? If this person who's missing two arms and a leg can surf, what's your excuse? Yeah, and this year you taught a guy with, I mean, I got to do this clinic. It was, I take a week off every year to teach and it's the best week of my year. There was a guy with no arms, no legs. Yeah, he, he surfed and then we had another gentleman named Dave who is a Vietnam vet. He had both of his legs blown off at age 21 and he's now 66 years old. And we taught him to surf and literally he learned faster than most people with two legs learn to surf and he did not stop. He must have wiped out 50 times and the guy was so determined he kept paddling back out. I want another one. I want another one. And I saw him learning and I thought I have to grab a GoPro and film this because I got it when he finally popped up. I happened to be there with my GoPro and got the footage, the the wave where he stood up on two artificial legs. And these are not the new ones. He's, he's stuck on his old ones. He likes them. He knows how to use them. And he popped them under him and just nailed this pop-up and rode this wave in in such utter sheer triumph. Aww. And it just was mind blowing to see how his determination didn't give up. And he's now surfing on two artificial wooden legs and making it happen, standing up. And I couldn't believe it. It's just mind blowing. And it's on our our YouTube channel and it's on our Instagram. You can watch it and it's pretty incredible to I'll, see it. Go to Surf Diva Surf School on Instagram. Yeah, I'll put the links to all of that yeah. in the show notes. Thank you. And then you taught a young woman who was blind and deaf to surf. Hey, Ben Jirma is inspirational. She's the first graduate of Harvard Law to be both deaf and blind. And she is an advocate now for disabled people in the, in, in, life in general for work and everything. And she's just, in order to teach someone like that, you have to be tactile. You have to use your hands. So I showed her how to lay down on the board by physically having her do it. And I would touch her leg and show her where it had to go up. And, and I had some really good help from some of my amazing instructors. Alyssa got to help me and some volunteers as well. And it was just rewarding because she had tried surfing before, but only tandem with a partner. And her dream was to surf on a wave by herself and we got to make it happen. It was New Year's Day. So it was so a pretty cool. incredible feeling to, to, I guess, to say to see that. But she's a dancer. She knows how to salsa dance. So I would use her hand and lift up her hand when a wave would come, like I was twirling her, to show her to put her side of her body towards the wave so she didn't get hit in the face with the wave. So it was kind of a dance out there. And it was just amazing. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Is if you could kind of fly a surfboard around the world or some some sort of banner around the world and it could read one message to the world, what, what would your advice be? Well, bubbling it down to one thing is hard, but I really think uh, we need to appreciate our bodies and what they can do for us and really protect our ocean and our environment. And global warming is real, people. My husband's a scientist and we see it happen. He's a geologist and a paleontologist. So he goes back millions of years. And he mm. absolutely agrees with the science. And I believe it too, that don't use single serving plastics, you know, think about using that plastic fork, think about using your own bags, your own coffee mug, and really try and do a local impact. And then hopefully it will go global, but we have to protect our earth. Izzy, thank you so much for being on we Wild do. Ideas Worth Living. You are an awesome guest, an thank amazing you. friend. And I love your wild ideas, Shelby. Thank you. Let's go surf naked. Uh, all right. We're going surfing naked in Costa Rica next week. For those of you listening, I'll have links on where to get Izzy's book, the YouTube videos, and the show notes. Just go to wildideasworthliving.com. You. I hope you enjoyed this show. For more on Surf Diva, you can go to surfdiva.com, 
at Surf Diva Surf School on Instagram, at Surf Diva on Twitter, and at Surf Diva on Facebook. And I love their Facebook because Izzy's twin, Coco Tihani, does this wonderful series called Coco's Closet, where she talks about what she's wearing and what you can wear right now. Also, if you go to their website, right now they're offering overnight all-girls boarding school, which is camps for teens and adults in San Diego. They also do co-ed camps all summer long, all year long, private lessons, co-ed corporate events, team building lessons, bachelorette parties, and so much more. Just go to surfdiva.com, check them out. And I don't know what you're doing this weekend, June 9th through the 11th, but I will be hosting the speaker series for the Outfound series in Hood River, Oregon. It's the first outdoor experiential conference of its kind, focusing on giving outdoor enthusiasts the opportunity to network with inspirational leaders and brands in the outdoor industry. There'll be talks, there'll be a startup competition, an outdoor festival, an expo, movies, and so much more. I hope to see you there. Thank you again for listening to the show. Thank you for subscribing to this podcast on iTunes. If you like this show and you want to tell every one of your friends, I'll love you for it. No, seriously, you can sign up right now at wildideasworthliving.com for the newsletter. We send it out every week. You can also tell your friends. We love it when you tell your friends. And wherever you are in the world, don't forget, the best adventures often happen when you follow your wildest ideas. Thanks again for the support and love. We'll see you next week, maybe even in Hood River, Oregon. You! You!